What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the You Know Ball podcast. I am your host, Trill Bro Dude, and today I am very excited to have back under the podcast Sam Sheehan, You Know Ball regular. If you want to get these episodes early, please check out the Patreon. The link is in the description. We live stream this to all the people that sign up for the Patreon. They get it early on their podcast feed. They also get an extra episode every single week. And as I said before, this is actually my last week at my job. So this will be my main thing moving forward. This will be my full-time focus. And the more people that sign up for the Patreon, the more content that I can create. So I appreciate your support if you've already signed up. If you have not, I would really, really appreciate it if you could. Please enjoy this episode and uh, please know that uh, we're joking uh, at the top section. Please don't find where I live, Detroit Pistons fans and draft sickos, when I'm making jokes about Cade Cunningham. So once again, if you're watching on YouTube, like, subscribe, turn on your notifications, follow us. We got a lot of good, good stuff coming up. Not only just podcast stuff, we're also going to do some short form content and we're also going to do some streams during the regular season like we did last night when we streamed during the Sixers net game, Nets game. That was a lot of fun. Check that out on YouTube as well and you can get that on your premium feed if you subscribe to the You Know Ball Patreon. So thanks again. All right, look, Blake Griffin winning sixth man of the year off the Celtics bench. I know he's completely fucking washed, but... I I don't know, man. I, I he's gonna be the sixth man of the year, and it's gonna make me really sad. But you know, it's the Celtics. All right, bye. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna go and said, brother. I think you're okay. <laughs> I don't think there's any danger of that happening as a Celtics fan. I can tell uh, you that. That, that maybe Malcolm was- Brogdon, like maybe if yeah. he, he plays more than 16 games, but like. I do not expect I, – I think Blake Griffin is going to get beat out by Noah Von Land camp. So, like <laughs> – So, I, I, I have to say, shout out to – I believe that was John Shields who sent in – he didn't say his name, but he asked me the number and I gave it to him. So, I'm assuming he's one of the head hogs from the Patri- the Unoball Patreon. And his uh, his thing was definitely not going to be Blake Griffin related, but I, I think you guys signing him sent him over the edge. And I think the Sixer – the Celtics – recent success has broken a lot of Sixers fans brains in a way. And the, the only like close thing I can think of for the Blake Griffin signing that you could say that he could be like a six man of the year candidate is the Kevin Love thing from last year where like everyone for like three years was like, Kevin Love is washed. He sucks now. And then he has this like weird comeback And I also didn't even realize Blake Griffin's only 33. I know that sounds weird to say. He's only 33. Like, I thought he was, like, 35 for some reason, or 36. I I will say, I think he'll be, like, generally, like, useful because he's, like, he's a charge machine now. Like, he's almost, like, reinvented himself, like, where he's, like, the league leader in charges last year or something like that, like, taken. Like, he's got, like, some shit. (laughs) Yeah. No, he's, like, he's, like, big Kyle Lowry now. And, like, you know, when we're going to, we're going to try and do um, scams to, uh, Giannis so like he's very <laughs> useful for that for like trying to tell Giannis out I mean I get why Sixers fans are like a little bit doomer about some of this stuff but I was thinking about this and Zach Lowe was kind of talking about it in like one of the podcasts like maybe two ago the one with Bon Temps and I, I kind of agree with this they really just need to like avoid the Celtics yeah. like we, we could like if you guys can get the one seed and let us in Milwaukee slug it out in the three seed Milwaukee's got a pretty good chance of beating us. Yeah. Um, I think we're like the by far the worst matchup in the Eastern Conference for you guys. And I think I agree. you guys could, could survive Giannis with Embiid. Like, I think like it would not and that's PJ like a Tucker. better matchup for you guys. That's, yeah. yeah. So. I, I, PJ's PJ is one of the best Giannis defenders. Embiid on the back line has always been effective against Giannis. Although Giannis mm-hmm. has gotten better since they've played regularly, but so has Embiid. But but like yeah. I, I do think that I totally agree. I think that the Celtics are the one nightmare matchup for us. Mm-hmm. I think if the Nets can figure it out, they're also a bad matchup for us. But their interior defense, as we saw last night, we'll talk a little yeah. bit about the preseason overreactions that we're having right now. We'll transition into that now. And there's been literally like 10 games. And I'm ready to like, I watch Cade stink it up in the first half. And I'm like, 
Tyrese Maxey's better than Kate Cunningham, and I just want to <laughs> let everyone know. I've been sitting on this take all summer, and I need a, to unleash it on a podcast after <laughs> after fucking Tyrese Maxey scores 20 points in uh, how many minutes last night? 14 minutes, I believe he played. Yeah. And he, he, he scored 20 points. Uh, it was amazing, although most of those came in the first three possessions that he scored uh, eight points on. But... Amazing to see from Maxi out of the gate, and uh, I, I like to kind of just make fun of the Cade fans and the draft sickos who who get all mad about that. So that's my overreaction to the first. I saw Cade play for one half, and I saw Maxi play for one half of a meaningless preseason game against the New York teams, and that is my my takeaway. Can you believe it, Sam? That I have. I, away? I am shocked. I'm shocked. <laughs> that that can, up again. can I also say though that I agree with you? <laughs> like, <laughs> I like as a propagandist. I mean, I don't even like dis. I don't. I'm not even like insane about Maxi. Like, because I know some people like. So I, I think Maxi has like a pretty good chance to be like you know an all star, not at all NBA, but like an all star guy. Yeah. You know, like I think Jamal Murray's probably a pretty okay comp for him. Like yeah, you yeah. know that level of player. Like um, and just and I think Cade is going to be a similar caliber player. <laughs> Yeah, and like that's what people like don't understand. I just don't understand where everyone gets the all NBA shit from, like all the time. Like it's hard to be an all NBA guard. You gotta be fucking good. Like, yep. I don't know. I don't. He like is he ever gonna be a engine for offense the way like Trey Young is? Like maybe Cade's a better defender, but like that's the benchmark. Like is you got to be better than Trey Young? And I don't know. I know that I always can see when, and and this is not meant to be Kate slander by any means, because I once again I agree. I think he's going to make some all star teams. I think he's going to be a very good player for a very long time. I think being an yeah. offensive engine, you need to have a few things. And like there were times last year when I heard people saying top five player, top ten player, and that's where they lost me in in this whole thing. And it's not even slander to say that I don't think a guy is going to be one of the 15 best players in the NBA. Yeah. Like, it's actually a very good outcome for literally every player, but because of the fact that he was the number one overall pick, it feels like there, and and also was loved by such a, a large group of people that follow the draft and know a ton more about scouting and basketball than me, mm -hmm that it feels like we can never back off of our original position on this. But I know that people backed off their original position on this because when he was in high school, he was Ben Simmons with a jump shot. And then by the time the draft – or by the time he got to college, he was Luka 2.0. And then by the time the draft came yeah. around, he was Jason Tatum and Chris Middleton, who are vastly different players across the board. Yeah. So I, So my whole thing is like you readjusted your expectations because Ben Simmons with a jump shot is a, ten, is a top 10 player in the NBA. Uh, Luka Doncic is literally a top 10 player in the NBA. And Jason Tatum is now a top 10 player in the NBA. And Chris Middleton being his floor is like Chris Middleton's a top 20 player in the NBA. So, so. Well, and, and that pisses Bucks fans off. Because I, I think that that's the, I think that's the, the bottom line here. And we're going to, we're going to get into this later when we're talking about some of this stuff is I think people haven't like recalibrated to the fact that the league is really different right now from like yeah. where it was like 10 years ago, guys are better for longer. And there's just a lot of talent and a lot of guys playing at a high level right now. Mm -hmm. And that like the t honestly, the league is ready for expansion. Like that's probably going to get announced here. Like what probably in the next week or two, but um, that's, you know, I don't think people understand that like it doesn't top 10 doesn't mean the same thing it meant in like 2010 when not you could be like, you know, like you have to be a really good player. Like I'm not sure Jason Tatum's a top 10 player. I'm pretty sure. Like, I mean, I am, but like you get, you've got to be that caliber of player and he's the best player on a championship caliber team. Like and yeah. that's just so far away from like where Kate is now. I mean, maybe he gets there, but it, it is not this, I guess it's just the certainty with which everyone says this and like yeah. pretty knowledgeable people too. And I'm like, man, I wouldn't, I almost like wouldn't bet that on like anyone. anyone. Yeah. It's like, like just Luca. It's like, Luca I was, say, Luca was, the last, was the last rookie that I felt. I, I will say even from a production standpoint, I would probably put Ben Simmons in that boat but Ben Simmons is a historical outlier in terms of never getting better and, and there was more yeah. proof of that last night but like his 
his whole thing is like a complete outlier. But like the last few guys that even were as good as they were as teenagers, as 20 year olds in their rookie season, like from if you just want to use advanced analytics and like overall production, it was like Kyrie Irving, Anthony Davis, and like. How was Kyrie ever like a surefire top 10 player? Like, I, I, no. I don't think so. Like, I don't he think he was ever a concern. Like, yeah, coming out sure. of college. yeah. And Anthony Davis was a top 10 player at one point, but it was much briefer than we expected it to be. And that mm-hmm. was injury related. Like, one of the things is like, you can never predict this shit from year one for a player. And I don't, I'm not rooting for, for any young player to be bad i want every young player to become the best version of themselves that they can but i do think that we get caught up with these these the certainty that like i loved evan mobley last year i'm not positive he's going to be a top 10 player i think that if he continues on a trajectory then yeah he'll probably get into that conversation at least but like there's a possibility he's not either and like eventually the guys that are top 10 players now are going to be replaced, but players play longer. They're effective longer. Like I think Jokic is going to be a top 10 player until he's like 40. <laughs> like, like right. it, he could have that type of career just because of his play style. Luca, same thing. Like guys that don't have, that don't rely like 100% on like athleticism and, and, and that kind of stuff. Like I do believe that players are going to be better for longer now. So it's just it is hard to project anyone becoming whatever uh in terms of like top 10 player. I'm just I'm very I never ever put that label on a guy after their rookie season just because I feel like I've been burned by it so many times. Well, and it's also, it's just like it's just so hard. Like you know what I'm saying? Like I think I don't think people cuz that that used to mean something like totally different like back in the day. Now it now it like means like I don't know. It just it it means something. People haven't really recalibrated to this new league where the talent is deeper, and I think we're seeing some of that in some of the over unders and the projections. Because I think people forgot how weird last year was too. Like we were still recovering from the COVID thing. There were a lot of injured players. There was a lot of shit that was a little fucked up. Like to be honest, like there was a lot of teams with guys out. Guys are going to get injured again this year. You know that's gonna that always dictates how these, how this stuff like comes down. But I really think that at the end of the day, like what we're going to see, you know, I I think, I don't think people are ready for how talented the league is at a level that it's not before. Like, I think a lot of people think the wizards are going to scrap for like the nine seed. They're going to be like way out of the playoff picture. Like they're not, they're not going to be close in the East. And in most years they would be like a seven seed. (laughs) <laughs> two years ago, that this team is better than their team from two years ago that was the eight seed and played the Sixers in the first round. That's right. how much better in only two years the league has got from a talent perspective, from a team perspective. I tweeted earlier today uh, and said, there's too many good players and teams for me to try to sit here and predict all of this. And then, of course, Reed Wallach tweeted at me and was like, you know, you just quit your job to do this full time. So you probably should get on top of that and figure out who you're, who you're doing, who you are picking. But And I will eventually get to that. But today we're going to do our preseason overreactions. And the, the, the preseason overreaction, did you catch the Ben Simmons Nets uh, game last night? I, I was sent a highlight. I was sent a highlight package. <laughs> okay. So. I- uh, 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 maxi maxi propaganda aside um the nets look like the nets and ben simmons look like ben simmons that we have literally always seen he's the same exact guy no better no worse he's the same guy that he's been since he was a rookie he's just ben simmons and i don't know what to do with that at this point can i admit something i i i let myself get a little bit just a, just a little bit, a little bit propagandized by the ESPN machine, where I listen to like Zach Lowe and Ramona Shelburne talk about it, and I've always been kind of like on the fence. Like I don't, I don't ever want to call Ben like a, a faker for like the mental health stuff or anything like that. But there is some healthy skepticism, I guess I would say, you know, <laughs> yes. or as much as there can be for someone who's supposed to take this seriously as like as part of my job. Um, so I've never, I guess, what I'm saying is I've. I've never really called Ben a liar, but I've also, I've I've just had a healthy skepticism about it. And I was like, you know what? I bet that was really hard. You know, maybe it is better, you know, change of scenery. Like I I bet it was kind of hard to go back. Like it's a bunch of weird stuff. Who knows? 
maybe maybe like with his back all fixed and everything he'll be fine <laughs> And then somebody sent me that him. She, it, you guys have to see this shot. It's his turnaround jumper. And the angle of it is such a way that it kind of looks online because you can't see the depth. And then yeah. it creams off the corner of the backboard. And I'm like, oh, yeah, baby. He's still here. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, I'm still no, here. No. He's like Joaquin Phoenix on the cover of the movie. I'm still here. Yeah. <laughs> he. Uh, he, by the way, he was being guarded by uh, George Niang on that possession, uh, lockdown defender George Niang, who he didn't even <laughs> attempt to take off the dribble. And oh, uh, man. look, look, Ben is uh, Ben is Ben. I honestly think for his first game back in two years, basically at this point, I mean, it's been a year and a half since he's played basketball. Uh, all things considered, he was fine. Like, I thought defensively he was kind of phoning it in, which is funny because that's like his calling card. Uh, he had a few possessions where Maxi beat him off the dribble, made him look silly. Uh, he also is pretty much a massive negative in the half court still, even mm -hmm. with all of this shooting and ball handling around him, at least to this point. Maybe they'll figure out some way to incorporate him in actions more, get him screening, rolling, all the things that everyone always talks about, about Ben Simmons, the things that he has never shown to do this far in his career, but he apparently will do them now. That is just how these things work in the NBA. He, you know, like, he can't create for himself. He really, his his half-court shot, er, shot creation for others is one of the most overrated things I've ever seen in my entire life. Um, you know, look, I was never a big Ben hater. I always was more neutral on Ben, but like you can't be a top 10 passer in the NBA. You might be from a standstill or from running in the open court, a top 10 passer, but you can't have zero scoring gravity and effectively be an, a top 10 effective passer. Like we were talking about it in the discord earlier and we were like, Jason Tatum, who is not as good of a passer as Ben Simmons, mm -hmm. is a more effective passer than Ben Simmons because he has the ability to shoot pull-up jumpers. He has the ability to create his own shot. He has the ability to run, pick, and roll. Ben Simmons doesn't have any of that, so his entire game is based on post-ups that are usually in single possession and then mm -hmm. finding a guy that's open on the perimeter or sometimes running dribble handoffs and creating some separation for a shooter – but the whole passing thing and playmaking thing, the assisted three thing, I said it when he was on the Sixers, it's fake. It's not real. Yeah. I said it's like our version of screen assist for Rudy Gobert. Like, yeah. Yeah. He, I always said that, and it's like you, I, I saw it again last night where he's like running in, in the open court and he's dipping it behind, no look pass behind his head to make it look all flashy. And then he, and it's like, I, I'm like, I, look, he's a very good defender. Maybe they'll figure out a way to use him in a way that's effective there. But, like, I just don't really want to hear about a guy's playmaking and passing when, like, he really only can do it in the open court and be effective. And he scored two points in the half court last night. Two points. And he was standing in the dunker spot, and Kevin Durant found him in the dunker spot because he got a double team on him. Like, that's what his role is going to be until he that's, figures something else out. Yeah, and I, I mean, I, you hit the nail on the head. That's That's what it is, you know. Like... Ben Simmons' star, I just don't think that's happening anymore, you know? Like, jury's still out on Ben Simmons' effective Nets player. Um, yeah. But, One you half know, of preseason basketball. <laughs> right, exactly. Well, but also, like, you also hit the nail on the other side. Um, the other head, nail head here, is, <laughs> you know, the start of that, if Ben just buys into his role shit, is starting to sound an awful lot like KOC talking about Russell Westbrook buying in and, you know, his role. Like, it, it, it is really tough to do that. It's, it's tough to do that at the end of your career where Russ seems to be. Vince Carter did it and some other, like, superstar guys did it. Um, Tracy McGrady did it a little bit. Um, you know, it's probably almost impossible when you've been an all-NBA guy and a max contract guy to do that when you're still in your prime. <laughs> ben yeah. Simmons is, you know, like. He's going to have more contracts. You don't want to, like, turn yourself into Super Bruce Brown before more contracts, you know, negotiations later on down the line. Not not fair. Bruce Brown, Bruce Brown shoots quarter threes now. Keep going. 
<laughs> I mean, that that's all I really have. I just think, you know, I, I've, I've kind of played with the nets over. I think that Nick Claxton and Ben Simmons can't really be on the court together. Like you almost have to play small. And I think that's largely fine for the regular season, you know, like if Ben buys into it, but just, you know, you just have to have that shooting around Ben. Like you literally cannot have another person who, can't you? And this is not news to your listeners. <laughs> I'm sure they're all aware. That's the thing that I've talked about with the Nets roster to me is like, you're o- if if Ben is in your lineup, you're always giving up something. Yeah. If Claxton plays with you, it's going to make your half court offense worse because you have two non shooters on the court. If you put Claxton on the bench and you put Ben at center, your rebounding is going to be fucking terrible. Mm, so yeah. what what are you giving up here? That that involves Ben Simmons in the starting lineup. Is it we're just going to lean all the way into offense and just say fuck rebounding and rim protection? Okay, maybe that works. Or are we going to say it's going to work in the regular season? We'll play with two non shooters and figure out the rest. Because when Ben Simmons went to the bench last night, they went on a twelve zero run. Mm-hmm. Like that, I I can see that kind of stuff happening just due to the fundamental issue of playing two non-shooters when you don't have Steph Curry on your team, which is really the main exception to that rule that when you have Steph Curry and Klay Thompson running off screens and even Jordan Poole to some extent, that it's a little bit easier with that off-ball motion. And like, look, at times last night when the Nets, once again, the Nets are the Nets. Their defense was terrible to start the game. They gave up 42 points in the first quarter to the Sixers without three of their starters. It's the preseason. Guys don't give a shit about defense, I understand. But this is the same exact thing we've we've seen with the Nets, is that they're going to come out and they're going to look like shit, and then they figure it out. And then in the second quarter or third quarter, they kind of figure hit their groove. They come back, and by halftime, the game's over because the starters aren't playing anymore, so there's nothing you can really take from the whole game. But I will say, I feel really good about the Sixers' depth right now. I feel really good about the fact that they go about 10 deep. Uh, I feel, other than the fact that Matisse Thibel still cannot dribble a basketball, it, <laughs> it's amazing to me. Uh, but I like what I saw from, from some of the new additions. I like what I saw from Melton, even though he missed every fucking shot he took, basically. He took t- seven threes, which is a massive improvement over a lot of guys. My my hot take before we move on to, I, I just want to talk about the Warriors little overreaction that people had um, over the weekend as well. But... Uh, and it's funny as I sit here and overreact to everything that I could criticize anyone's overreactions. But the uh, the thing I will say is I actually think Shake Milton is gone soon from the Sixers because I, I, I've i come to this conclusion due to the fact that I think Isaiah Joe looked better last night. I think Furkan Korkmaz looked better last night. And I just don't really think Shake has a role on this team without – like you have Harden for ball handling, you have Maxi for ball handling, you have Embiid for ball handling, you have Tobias for ball handling. The rest of the guys that you want to put around them are spot up shooters. And Shake's shot has fell so far off a cliff, and his he doesn't bring nearly enough when he doesn't have the ball. That I feel like Isaiah Joe is going to be that fifteenth man that makes the end of the roster, and I feel like they're going to end up choosing between trading. Charles Bassey or cutting Charles Bassey and trading Shake Milton. And I think they're probably going to lean in that direction with, with, with getting rid of Shake. Maybe it won't happen sometime in the next two weeks. Maybe they just cut Bassey and look to trade Shake later. It's a little bit hard. He's on a veteran's minimum deal. And maybe they'll just save him for a later move. But I, I, I have a hard time seeing Shake Milton on the Sixers long term just due to the fact that he has a bit of a weird skill set to fit with the rest of the current roster. So just wanted to leave it at that. So the the other thing that I thought was funny over the weekend, which by the way I'm overreacting to Maxi's game, I'm overreacting to Ben Simmons' return, I'm over- overreacting to the Nets playing shitty defense. But I did think it was funny how people did this for the Warriors over the weekend. I'm not sure if you if you caught this, but James Wiseman comeback player of the year, maybe. Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! Patrick Baldwin. Oh, uh, my favorite tweet from the fr- fr- that came out of this weekend with the Warriors games was. Someone said that uh, Patrick Baldwin has potential to be a less athletic Carmelo Anthony with better defense and less scoring punch, which is just he's an all star for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, you're a Hall of Famer. If if, yeah, if yeah, even, even if, with and less athleticism is a little bit uh, of an understatement. I would say 
Uh, Patrick Baldwin tested as the worst athlete at the combine from like the past five seasons. <laughs> so uh, Warriors fans are down like really bad right now for a team that just won the title. Like <laughs> it's like, it's kind of crazy. Like yeah. that. Cause I, I put the Warriors for, I did like a little ranking, like predicting where standings would end up at the end of the year. And I had the Warriors fourth in the West. Um, which honestly I thought was pretty generous considering the way, like I know they're champions and everything, but I was getting some replies about like how they never had their three best players playing together. And I was like, they did on. though. Like Clay Tom- we're, we're, he's not the that Clay Thompson. Is anymore. that what we we're talking about? He's not here? better like, than Wiggins. He's not, yeah. he's not better than Poole. <laughs> yeah. So that's like my thing is it's like, you guys are looking at something like, I hope Clay comes back. Cause Clay is fun. Like, you know, I don't think it's happening. I'm sorry. Like, I just don't think – I think that guy's gone. Like, that's really tough with those Look, knee he's, injuries. He's, and, he's, tall Kyle, he's tall Kyle Corver now. It's yeah. fine. He's still a yeah, fine player. He's fine. You know, that he's still a, a fine player, but he's, like, your seventh or eighth player now. He is not your third best player anymore. Yeah. Like, so I, – I, and I guess, like, everyone's, like – because I, I know they're tired of hearing about, like, letting Otto Porter and – um Gary Payton, uh, second. Uh, Gary Payton Jr. Like go, um, the second. And again, <laughs> you're relying a lot on your young guys. You're a lot. You're relying a lot on your young guys, and I just don't think. And Wiseman is bad. Like that's just the funniest thing in the world. <laughs> that guy's like never going to be, like like he he is a he is the definition of a backup center. There's no. Uh, you can quote this on me. You can clip me. You can fucking Warriors he fans. The other day, it, he did. It, it, he did good, but Whatever. he did back up center things good, which is what we expected. <laughs> which is the th- like he's never going to be better than Kevon Looney. Like I'm sorry, and I just Warriors fans are like I'm sorry that you guys had an insanely expensive roster and you were talking about how light years ahead you were. Um, Moses Moody better be fucking good, man. That's all I can say, and maybe he will be. But they have a, I, I I was told by another tweet by a light years person that they have a better core young core than the thunder and magic despite not oh, tanking at all so which That's which so is sad. which is so great because it was and and in 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 the tweet the inclusions were pool who's very good yes he's a good young player yeah, he's um Moses Moody who I like I think he's a good prospect but we'll see uh Jonathan Kaminga good prospect we'll see um, James Wiseman, who has played uh, no good games in the NBA his entire career. Patrick Baldwin, who was a very high high school recruit, was terrible in college, and has had one good preseason game where he made three open threes. Great job. So, like, look, the Warriors have done a good job considering draft position. Jordan Poole was an absolute steal. Moses Moody was good for where he went. Kaminga was a top 10 pick. Wiseman was a top 10 pick. You were bad during those seasons too, by the way. Like you might not have tanked on purpose, but you still lost a ton of games. Like it's not like that's like, you don't get rewarded for not tanking because you had the second pick of the draft. Like Draymond basically tanked that entire season. You don't Draymond didn't give a fuck for the entire season because he knew yeah. the team was shit. It doesn't make you it doesn't make your 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 team morally better for not tanking because for two years you basically took a fucking vacation in the middle of your little run or whatever. But my, my whole tank. thing But that's the thing, they did tank. Like, you know, yeah. they just did the they did the moral tanking of like Steph you have an one of your big, one of your big, yeah, one of your big stars is injured, and that's organic. And you, you, you go in the tank for supposedly one season, but then they tried to get good with D'Angelo Russell, and that fucking sucked. That didn't work. I'm sorry, you have to own that. Like, I know, yeah. So anyway, actually, I, the, I season, the season after they tried to be good, and they lost in the play-in, if we remember correctly, when they didn't have Clay. Yeah. So, so, like, look. I like some of the Warriors' young players. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's let's see how life looks like after Steph Curry. Yeah. Let's see how life looks when you don't have one of the 10 best basketball players of all time playing for your team. Because it's really easy to sit here and say that the party is going to keep going, as Warriors' ownership has said, when uh, you, know, you lose one of the greatest defenders, one of the greatest playoff defenders of all time in Draymond Green, and one of the greatest players of all time. Eventually, they will age out. And I'm not saying that this young core isn't good. I'm saying that let's not 
say it's any better than like the Orlando Magic, who I think have many prospects that I would would rather have over any of the guys on the uh, on the. War- could you imagine if someone said this to me? Could you imagine if the Warriors hit on the Lamelo pick, or they got Franz Wagner? Or they got like they got someone really good, like that was very obviously an amazing prospect. Mm-hmm. Like with the picks that were they and, and look, Kaminga could still be good, Wiseman could still be good. I don't think they're gonna be better than Franz and Lamello. I mean, who just were very, very good as rookies and sophomores. But like, could you imagine if they had hit on those picks how insufferable this would be right now? It would like you just won a title and you hit on these picks and you might keep the di- that that might have made it so that they could actually keep the party going as you, as you say, and and keep the dynasty going for another decade. How about if they just took Franz Wagner instead of Jonathan Kaminga? That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, just like literally. Yeah. Like just, if you just took Franz, like that's, if they had the actual top tier prospect guys, LaMelo and Franz, this would be truly insufferable. But now they have two guys that they are, you know, Wiseman and Kaminga could be good. We'll see. We'll wait. They're still young. But I, I I don't know. They're not Kaminga to me. Won't. They're what's that? Uh, oh, that never mind. <laughs> Wiseman will not be good. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, not, <laughs> I, I, I'm not backing off that. I'm sorry. He's he he wasn't that good of a prospect. That was he he was Marvin Bagley again. I'm sorry. Like that <laughs> we've never seen that prospect work. I'm sorry. That prospect has literally never worked. Uh. So any other preseason of reactions? Had do you watch the Celtics preseason game against the Hornets? Oh, did I? Oh, oh, Trill, did I? Um, I'm delighted. Um, <laughs> this pro- this means the title's back on, you know, a 40 point blowout of, Oh, okay. So we're back. T- terrible, terrible Charlotte Hornets team. But I-, I will say a lot of our young guys look good. You know, who knows? Kevin Gelly, JD Davison, the, um, Sam yeah. Hauser knocking down some threes. Kevin Ka- Gelly's back. I-, I keep hearing about this. Like, you know, is he the next James Wiseman? He, He's better than James Wiseman. I'm sorry. He like <laughs> straight up is. Um, I, I'm, I'm very interested to see how the roster shakes out. I mean, I'm still terrified of our big depth just in terms of um, – I think this is a year when it's going to be very important to win a lot of regular season games. That's not usually the case. I think the one seed is going to be very valuable for reasons we talked about at the top of the pod this year. And I really would like the Celtics to survive Robert Williams and – what will probably be an Al Horford injury at some point. And I think that's like, that's the thing that could sink our season, not our horny coach, not some of this other stuff. It's having to play the bucks in round two is how you get your season ruined. I think so. Yeah. I, I, I think that that is going to be, in, I mean, look, it's, it's been important the past few years. And really mm-hmm. if the, uh, the Sixers weren't such frauds two years ago and didn't have bad injury luck last year. They might have proven why it was so important to get that second round matchup right, yeah. as opposed to facing either the Bucks or the Celtics, who I view as the only other teams in the East that like have leg- a legit shot to win the title. So mm-hmm. we will see. Um, there's still a ton of preseason to go until we get to the regular season. But since we are talking about young teams, fun teams, whatever. We're going to transition into our Zach Lowe prediction for his league pass rankings. So this is an idea that someone had pitched to me in the Discord, uh, which is, this is very similar to the Patreon episode we did a few weeks ago, the over-under on Ryan Rossillo and Bill Simmons. We are going to be predicting Zach's his annual league pass rankings that he does every year. He he actually ranks 30 through one. He goes through and he ranks every single team. I just picked out the teams that I thought he was going to have at the top of his list this year. And you can kind of tell he gives hints throughout mm-hmm. yeah. his podcast, like who he really likes going into this season. Like a, a few of these teams we'll talk about, like he can't help himself, but get really excited over them, but we love Zach. And uh, so we'll predict Zach's uh, preseason. And then we'll also give our own league pass ranking. So I have my top five with an honorable mention. And then uh, Sam, you can also share yours as well. So let's start at the top with the one team we know is a lock. And I think this is going to be a lock for everyone's list. Yeah. If, I, if I have to say, and that is the team that you DM me about yesterday, which is the New Orleans Pelicans. Yes. Which yeah. I would imagine that Zach 
is feeling very high on them. He's done multiple podcasts on them this offseason, yeah. which is a, a hint at that. He's talked a lot about their offense and how exciting – things mm-hmm. could be so what what do you think zach is is feeling on this uh new orleans pelicans team and why is he so excited about them i mean look there's a lot that can go wrong like zion i know he's injured i know there's a lot of things but boy boy if you just think about the offense you think about brandon ingram <laughs> <laughs> I, he's gonna he's gonna get wound up about something like that. I feel like I and, and like I I think you know the, the defense. You know they're, they're like a, a ready made league pass team because you know they're gonna be in a lot of shootouts. Um, I think like um, especially with like Zion coming back, they don't have a ton of plus defenders on the roster. You know, switching oh. J Stephen Adams for JV is pretty good, except for except Not- for. Top 100 Not on Herb. Herb. <laughs> yeah, 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 except for Herb Jones. Um, That's Zach's boy. By way, yeah. By the way, it'd be very funny if, like, what do you think? What do you think the Cavs would trade for Herb Jones? Like, t- tomorrow? Like, you know, like. Well, they they don't have anything. They left. don't have any picks. Yeah. 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 But the, but it, but uh, we talked about this mm-hmm. when I went on Chucking Darts podcast, and he mm-hmm. was like, "I don't think the Pelicans would trade Herb Jones." But what would it take to get Herb Jones? Like, I really don't even – because of the fact that he's on that second-round scam contract mm-hmm. yeah. and because of the fact that he was, like, already one of the 10 best rookies and, like, a really good defender, made an all-rookie uh, team and, like, look really good. Now, look, I think he's going to have a better career than Matisse Thibel, but I did get tricked by Matisse Thibel in his mm-hmm. rookie season who did the same exact thing, came out amazingly. He was an older prospect. May I don't think he made all rookie. He might have been like second team. I don't mm. think he did though. I think that he just missed the cut and it was a big deal. But long story short, here is that I don't think there's like anything short of like a star or like f- three first round picks that they would trade Herb Jones for realistically. Second yeah. team. Second I was gonna say it need, it need to be like two first round picks and one of them would have to be good. I think like you yeah. Know. Yeah. Which Something is crazy like to say for a guy who just went in the second round last year, but he was well, so good for a, a team that really, really needs defense. Can, can I get a little spicy here? Yes, I think the Pelicans have a shot at the three seed. <laughs> like, really? I think I so think, too. I in think, the regular season, yeah, I think they're gonna win a lot of games. Like health, health was standing, but you forget about how many like fucking good guys they have on that team. Like, yeah, you know, you think about like. You get caught up with, like, Jackson Hayes, who I don't think is good and is, like, a bad dude. But, like, yeah. every other player on their roster, like, their 13th player is Nikhail Alexander-Walker or something like no, that. No, he's like, gone. He's gone. He went to – he's on the Jazz. Oh, he's on the Jazz. Never mind. Um, yeah, yeah. But, no, they – Jose, Jose Alvarado is on their bench. Larry Nance, uh, Trey Murphy, right. who I actually think is going to be good in his second year. Like, their depth is, like – so, the thing that I think that I've overrated in the past is depth – when you don't have the top end talent. So like, for example, yeah. last year going into the season, the Atlanta Hawks were my like, Oh, I could see them be in a top three seed in the East. They're coming off the conference finals. Instead of looking at it, like they probably overachieved and they ran into a Sixers team with a beat up Joel and bead and a imposter syndrome, Ben Simmons and not much else. And I looked at it like they're deep and they're like they're 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 gonna be hungry and whatever. But the thing is they only have one guy, and that's Trey yeah. Young. Like the one guy that really, really matters. And the Pelicans, I would say, have two guys that really matter in Brandon yeah. Ingram and Zion Williamson. And they're both yeah. young and they'll both get better. And I think that CJ McCollum, at least offensively, is a very good complement to those two. Defensively, yeah. I think they're going to have a lot of issues, but they have a lot of good defenders coming off their bench. Jose Alvarado, Trey Murphy, Larry Nance, I didn't even mention, I don't think. Like, I think that the Pelicans 1 through 10 is pretty good. They're deep, and they have a guy in Zion that, like, if all things go right for Zion, he could be an MVP candidate next year. Right. And then on top of that, they're also bringing in Dyson Daniels, who's like a top 10 pick, and I'm pretty high on, to be honest. Like. Yeah. <laughs> You know, Good like, perimeter defender. Yep, like I think he can help them a lot. You know, like with, with with some of their perimeter defense. Like you know, him and Herb together, I think would be that's a little nasty. You know, like and you know the interior defense probably won't be there, but I I just 
I really, really like the Pelicans. I think they're a lock across the board for most people's like league pass teams. I mean, yeah, maybe they the suck. Option. You know, maybe they're not good. By the way, talking about teams with like fake depth, the team like that this year is the Knicks, who I am way down on. And everyone is saying Zach is not. Zach likes the Knicks. I, I know, and he's wrong. He's wrong for it. But, <laughs> right. Um but but that's the same thing. It's like the Knicks Knicks fans are like, oh, like we have like 13 really good guys. And it's like, yeah, and they're all like five to six mans on good teams. It's like yeah. you, and, no. and, and and good good thing your coach has a six man rotation in the regular season. <laughs> <laughs> and he never plays anyone under the age of 25. So, yeah, and, he, and he will always play Evan Fournier too. So really it's a five man rotation. He will start him over your favorite player. He doesn't yeah. give a fuck if you die in the streets. <laughs> <laughs> he is a, he is basically mask off doc rivers. <laughs> if, <laughs> if doc Please rivers, stop. Yeah, that yeah. Staff. same guy, oh, same so guy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they're boys for a reason. Like mm-hmm. he's basically, yeah, he's Doc. If he didn't go to politician school, if he didn't learn how to work the media a little bit, you know, like, uh, and uh, I even think Zach might have brought this up on a recent podcast, talking about the Toppin and Randall fit and how did you uh, did you catch this? Am I? I, I did, unfortunately. Yeah, 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 where he's like, you could tell that Tibbs was out for blood waiting for Zach said this he's like he was out for blood like waiting for someone to bring up oh why don't you try Obi Toppin and Julius Randle together like those lineups had good on off data whatever and he's like yeah we're not gonna fucking do that I don't give I don't give a shit you nerd like I'm the coach I'm in control here you don't get to say how it goes I do so yeah I I think I I think the Knicks have a lot of yes good role player complimentary talent and I think that all of that to compliment Julius Randall is a, a bit much for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm spoiler alert. I don't think the Knicks were going to be in the play in either. I, I, I like the magic and the Pistons more, to be honest. The like, magic and the Pistons to make the play. I don't know if I would go that far. I, I'm, I really am not a believer in the Knicks. I know, I know everyone loves Jalen Brunson, but like, I just, I really don't think they're very good, but I don't know. So, it's just me. So uh, Zach had them winning over thirty nine games. Was the line on the over under podcast? Crazy. So he thinks they're going to win like forty games. I do not see that. But in, I also in East in this yeah. new East. There's no way. There's no way. Like the like, East is. There's less teams selling. There's only really like two bad teams. Like like I said, the Wizards are like the third worst team in the East, and they're not god awful. Like yeah. they would be in the middle, like on a lot of years. So. I don't know. Yeah, I, I I just think that like every time I try to rank these teams, that once again what I'm go what I was talking about earlier. Every time I go back, I'm like, how the fuck do I have the Cavs in the play play in? Like, how the mm-hmm. fuck do I have the Heat in the play in? Or how the fuck do I have like? There's going to be a lot of teams that we that we think are good that are going to be fighting for a play in spot. Like yeah. I said it on a recent podcast. I think there are three locks. Obviously, considering health to the best players, because that's mm-hmm. always the case when you're trying to make right. locks. Right. But I would say the Celtics, the Bucks, and the Sixers are the only three teams I think are locks for a top six seed. Yeah. And if they aren't one of those seeds, it's because Jason Tatum, Giannis, or Embiid got hurt. So, right. like, I don't really see a way that, like, it's some of these teams, like even got even teams that Zach Zach's gonna love and have on his list, like. I, I'm I'm just like very conflicted on on who is going to be those top six seeds. It's really hard to figure out. But before we before we move on to like our our the rest of our list, I know you wanted to sound off of one of these teams that's in this mix, that is a, a fan favorite at the You Know Ball podcast and one of Zach's favorites, which is the right. our friends from the north. Our friends from the north. So I I love. Zach, okay, as evidenced by the fact of how often I do an impression of him and how <laughs> well I know him and his guests' verbal and vocal tics. I listen to every episode of Zach's podcast. I love him. Huge disclaimer. That said, he is essentially team media for the Toronto Raptors. <laughs> like, there is no – like, he's he's an excellent analyst about 27 and a half of the teams in the league. Um, and, you know, a, a really sharp, really good, you know, generally – the, today with Pelton, when they were talking about over-unders for the Raptors, 
he said that I think it was 44 and a half or 45 and a half was like, what am I missing? This is so easy. This is the easy. This is crazy low, which is so fucking funny. We're talking about the team that was a six seed last year and had resurgent everything go right seasons. This is like the exact opposite of what happened to the Raptors the year before. Huge Remember, like, 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 like coming season- into last year, the Raptors over under was like 28 and a half or something like that. And I was yeah, like, you were oh. like way over. Yeah, and I was I like coming into the season, I was like, that is a way over. They were in Tampa Bay, like they, they had a bunch of injuries. Siakam sucked shit. Like, you know, like that's an easy over. They're gonna be like back to being pretty good again, relatively. Like they're gonna be in a playoff spot. Um, and but then this is the other thing. People have gone the other way now, where you have to understand that last season was a little bit of an outlier for the Raptors too. Like, you know what like that sure. Pascal Siakam. People forget, like, he they're in two years of basically being dog shit, like, and, and being very bad. bad. Like, yeah. we like people forgot about like what happened to him in the bubble in that Celtics series. Like, the the um the Sixers didn't really have the personnel to really take advantage of that. But like, he's not like he's not that guy. You know what I'm saying? Like, people he's treat not him an like offensive he, engine. Like that right. that that has been my thing with him is like it's not that Pascal Siakam's a bad basketball player at no. at a certain. I was like, I would trade Ben Simmons for Pascal Siakam. Absolutely. Like that was to be a fair trade when, when that was out there or whatever. But like the thing with Pascal is like, if you have your number one and number two guy in place, he's fine as a third guy. And I don't even know if the shot isn't as consistent as it used to be. If he ever will be the same that he was during that year where he was the third guy with the Raptors in that championship run. But My thing that drives me nuts is like, yes, Pascal was was good in the in the Sixer series and honestly was fighting like hell. And I, I have to give him a lot of respect for that. But at the same time, their offense and their half court offense was fucking dog shit. And the fact yeah. that people talk like their offense and that series was actually close literally drives me insane. Like yeah. the Sixers won three of those games by like 20 or more points. Yeah. One game was close, went to overtime. The Sixers won that. Okay, could have went either way. One game was close, the Raptors won. And then one game, the Raptors won by like 15. So, yeah. and that game was close. Both of the games that the Sixers lost were close until the fourth quarter. So, like, yeah. this idea that the Raptors were, like, fighting the Sixers, and that was a really close series, it was just due to the fact that the Sixers personnel was what the Sixers personnel was with – Joel Embiid's history and James Harden's history and Doc Rivers' history, that team, yeah. I think, will be a very, very good defensive team once again. They'll be yes. excellent yep. defensively. Transition-wise, they'll be an awesome transition offense. Their half-court offense is, like, the worst in the NBA every yeah. year. Like, since they have lost uh, – Ka- well, they had Kyle Lowry. When they had Kyle Lowry, they were fine. But, like, the last two years, their half-court offense has been, like, bottom of the barrel – so unless you're expecting a superstar leap from Scotty Barnes, which almost never happens for for wings in year two or whatever Scotty Barnes is, then I just don't see a way that you can say that the Toronto Raptors are like a lock to be a play a playoff team this year. And I guess that's just what what drives me crazy about it is it's like they didn't – everyone was like, right, because because Zach was pretty dismissive of the idea that like they didn't do anything. And it's like, well, yeah, like every other team – got better like the Sixers are gonna have a full year of James Harden like the Nets are gonna have Kyrie back again um and, you know and the the Bucks are <laughs> for a little bit we don't know if Ben Simmons is <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah we don't know about Kyrie or Ben Simmons what we're actually gonna get like I actually think if you put it head-to-head with the Nets and Raptors I'm close on which team I think will ha- finish ahead only due to the personalities and the injury history of the Nets guys. But on a talent perspective, obviously, if the Nets are healthy and, and normal brained, then they're yeah, yeah. They take them over. by the way, chat just bringing up that Bill Simmons released a new podcast with Zach. I, I bet that's the yeah, 20 minutes ago. Yeah, I was it's gonna say not, it's not the it's not the the uh the league pass rankings though. I no hope. Way. He I doesn't hope. go on he does he doesn't go on Bill's podcast to do that. They just talk about like the NBA at large. So yeah. I will be binging that after this. After yeah, I was gonna say I'm definitely that's that's a tomorrow morning commute one for me. 
while all of you hogs are listening to this, I'll be dining on <laughs> premium Simmons and low content. Um, that is top-notch content, right? There. It's literally my by the favorite way, I, preseason podcast. Sight unseen, I guarantee you there is there's a there's a bant and there is a riff. Um there's a bant and a riff about um Zach being <laughs> Okay. Oh no. Oh fuck. <laughs> For people listening on audio, Bill Simmons called it a heated games of are we sure with the yeah. 2022, 2033. This is why he's the king though. That is such a good concept. I, I almost hold on real quick. Can we just like little mini segment in here? Can we can we do a, a quick prediction of the are we sure that Bill is yes. throwing out? Yeah. Hundred yeah. percent. Okay, okay. So I think I think of Bill Simmons. I think I think one we're we're one we're gonna see what we're gonna hear of is um, spoken very um, very <laughs> like like it's like a uh, an out of out of sorts out of crazy thing like I think Bill is <laughs> he's gonna that? he's gonna say are we sh- are are we are we sure that. Um, are we sure that the Sixers are good? Is gonna is definitely. Gonna be. <laughs> right, I'm not. I'm not kidding. That's definitely no, no, gonna no, happen. No, no. Okay, so I can't figure out if Bill has done this. So I'm. I've been trying to psychoanalyze Bill with the Sixers coming in because prior to uh, the draft, he was like, "Are we sure Maury's still good? Are we sure that he's yeah. still a good GM?" Then he liked the Melton trade. Then yeah. he liked the Tucker signing even though he said Tucker was old and whatever. Then he like then he talked himself into the moves, and now he's like, okay, Maury's good. The, the, most recently, he called Philadelphia the new Boston on his podcast the other day, which uh, I don't know. I don't I don't know what that means. But he, in terms of, like, the Eagles being good and the Sixers yeah. being good, he thinks the Sixers are going to be really good. But I, they also just started a really good new podcast, by the way, called the Philly Special with Shil Kapadia and Benjamin Solak. And part of me thinks that this is just a because he plugged that in the middle of this. <laughs> part of it makes me think he knew that people like me would clip it and like post it and like talk about it. And then that would get buzz for the podcast as well. So are, are, Zach, are we sure Zion's good? <laughs> are we sure Zion's good? Ooh, oh boy, Bill Simmons. Oh boy. Put me in the fire. You're you've you've you're pontificating? Is that a word? Is pontificating a word? I don't know. I, my my father taught English for several years. But I mean, like, look, Zion, I, I get it. <laughs> and by the I, way, only eight teams make the playoffs. So, you know, Blazers fans, don't get mad at me. There are eight <laughs> teams. You have to tell me who you're leading off. You know, like we have to talk about it. You only get eight spots. God, I love, I love Zach's <laughs> old man shit. Is so funny. Like, so oh Bill, Bill's are we sure he, uh, storylines? Okay. Um, the Zion one. Sure? By the way, uh, that wasn't a joke. The Zion one, I really think is going to happen. Yeah. Okay. Are we sure? Are we sure this isn't LeBron's last year with the Lakers? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's already hinted at this one, so we know that's yeah. coming. Um, he's going to say something, like, arcane about, like, agents. Like, like he Bill loves being, like, a, a soothsayer tea leaves guy for, like, agents, which is so funny because I don't – I haven't seen any proof that that fucking matters at all. <laughs> and he reads into it. So Unless you're Woj and you literally need sources, like that's yeah. where it's like that's where it really pays off to like suck up to a guy. Like, yeah. it's so funny. It's so funny. I, I think um, I think another one we're getting is um, I think he's gonna I I think he's gonna stake out a corner on the magic. I think he's gonna say, "Are are are we sure the magic are bad or, or something like that?" Sure, um, sure. Yeah. yeah. Are we sure yeah. the magic aren't a playing team? Right, right. Yeah. Are we sure are we sure are we sure the Cleveland Cavaliers aren't championship contenders? Yeah. He's he's kind of he's backed off that I think a little like something he said in a recent podcast made me think that he's not like as insanely gung ho about it. But the other thing I think he's going to do um I think he's going to say are we sure Shea Gilgis Alexander stays with the Thunder this year? Like like that's a you know like like that's not something everyone knows. Yeah. yeah. Are are we sure? Are we sure the Phoenix Suns are gonna make the top six? 
Are we yeah. sure? Yeah. Are, are, are we sure Devin Booker cares cares enough about basketball? He's out there. He's posting clips. Yeah. They lost to the oh, Ad- yeah. they lost to the Sixers, not the Philadelphia 76ers, the Adelaide 36ers. And he's posting yeah. clips of LeBron James after he lost in the finals in 2011 after a preseason game. Like that is a billism where he's going to be like I just don't think Booker like he still you can still tell he still doesn't like Booker because the one yeah. time he criticized Booker for not doing Team USA when like Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum and them did it. Yeah. And you can tell part of him is like still mad because Booker made fun of him for it the next season when he was really good, basically. Yeah. Like, I still uh, just want to see, I still just want to see like Devin Booker like w- like be the guy. Like Chris Paul, Chris Paul comes there, he's the guy. Like, I just want to see Devin Booker be the guy. It's a weird situation, Zach. It's real weird. Does some something doesn't pass the smell test there? <laughs> why why is Jay Crowder leaving? What's that? He, he's a winner. He's been in winner culture is his whole life. What, what the what the fuck was up with that DeAndre Ayton thing? Like, I, I something doesn't pass the smell test there, leadership wise. <laughs> leadership, yeah, yeah, yeah. Leadership wise, yeah. After their, yeah. Uh, you know, entire franchise just went into the fucking shitter because of the owner and. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But it, uh, it do, does DeAndre Ayton want it enough? Is Devin Booker good enough of a number one alpha leader? Is is really? Uh, I think I think his his stance on the Suns is going to be easy. Is like, are we sure the Suns aren't in the plan? Which I th- I think you said yeah. first, and I, yeah, I think yeah. that's right. And I think that's I think that's going to be the the take. So yeah, we'll see but how I'm, good we are at Bill whispering um, <laughs> when the pod I, comes out. I am ready to overreact to them losing to an Australian team. I'm sorry, you can't lose. Not only did they lose to an Australian team, and I know that it was mostly the bench that sucked, but like. You can't lose to an Australian team. And apparently that Australian team finished like six in their league last year. Like they're not even like the warriors of the Australian league. Like they're yeah, like yeah. the bulls of the Australian <laughs> league. Like, yeah. like you got, you gotta, you gotta beat that team. If you want, I know you won like 65 games last year or whatever, but like, and like no teams win over 60 games anymore, but like, I, I'm losing a little bit of respect for the Phoenix well, it's Suns. Cause, it's because the West was free. I'm sorry. The West was free last year. That's the other thing people aren't catching up to. Like, I'm way under on the Grizzlies for that exact reason. I'm way under yeah. on the Warriors for that exact reason. And I'm under on the Suns for that reason. The good teams weren't out there in the West. I'm sorry. Like, it was it, it, it was a one-off. You know, the, the West is going to be good again this year. And the, Conversely, the East is pretty good again. But anyway, um, I just think uh, the the Suns they're, they're I I guess what I would say what I said on Twitter they was play a team. <laughs> yeah what I said on Twitter was it's pretty um, incredible that the Celtics with all this Ime Udoka shit um, still are not in the bottom two of worst vibes in the preseason b- behind the Suns and the Mavs yeah. like the, the Mavs have horrendous vibes too. The Lakers really are bad. literally trying to trade a player. It, yep. Shams is releasing articles about Russell Westbrook where they're like, like, so we want to trade him, but we don't want to give up these picks. But also we're going to try to make it work. But also if you want him, you can have him. Like, yeah. it's a very weird Jedi mind trick where they're, where they're like, this isn't going to work and Russ is dog shit, but also you should trade your good players for him. <laughs> like, it, it like has... It has kind of like the smell of like your buddy being at a bar and like you haven't seen like him with his girlfriend in a while, and you're and you he's just like he's just like yeah she's just like tired a lot lately you know like she doesn't she and she like moved out like for that was a very Russillo esque um, yeah, I was gonna say, <laughs> this is literally Russillo yeah. I was like when you said my but you see your your buddy and his girlfriend I was like is it, have Ryan Russillo literally done a fucking yeah. exorcism of you. I've, I've, I've done this pod with you too many times where I've, just, <laughs> I've, I've internalized it all. Like I've, I've left them all living in my brain. Like <laughs> the borps and the schnarps and the bipums and the ripums and the zipums. We love it, folks. So, I, all right. So back to the list. We have yep. the New Orleans Pelicans as the lock. We all have them on our list. Yes. I'll, I'll pick a team here that I have, unless you, we are, you did your Raptors thing. I have the Raptors on Zach's top 10 list. Because I think he loves the Raptors, but also mm-hmm. Scotty Barnes is like going to be his main thing here. I'm going to respectfully disagree because I think that he does understand that their offense is going to be dog shit, like you went over. Um, yeah. 
I think he's just in the tank for them, but I think he does understand the basketball like machinations of that because you know, to just go through the Raptors thing again. Like you said, I totally agree with everything you said. You know, they're gonna be a pretty good defense. They might be a top five defense, honestly. Like yeah. And which, you know, you're usually a pretty good team when that happens, but I just they're gonna be a horrific they're they are gonna be so reliant on transition. And who knows, maybe they get the steals to make that happen, but I just don't think Scotty Barnes is taking a leap. But I don't know if aesthetically they're like pleasing enough. Yeah. It's like it's, it's, it's usually a balance of young, good young team or contender and yeah. aesthetically pleasing or something new has been added to the mix. Yeah. Cause that is another reason. Like I have a few teams on here where like, he's just going to want to see what these teams look like more so than like the actual basketball itself being pleasing. To right. Work. Can I knock out two more? Um, can I knock yeah. out two more locks that I think are definite top five yeah. for him? Warriors and Nuggets. I think are both surefire locks for him. Hundred percent on Nuggets. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Yeah, anything Jokic is yeah. going to be. Zach is shilling for well, Jokic. And to Zach's credit, if Michael Porter Jr. doesn't like um, die in like a cyberpunk edge runners type back um, <laughs> cybernetic um, style accident, he he like Michael Porter Jr. and Jamal Murray back like that. That will be a really fucking fun team and an excellent sure. excellent offense. You know, yeah. like so. Really bad um, bench, but good, good, good top six or seven. Is it a bad bench though? Yes, it's pretty. It's, a bad it's pretty good. It's got the isn't it's KCP. It's Bruce Brown. It's um, he will start. Bruce Brown will probably close games. I would imagine. I don't mm -hmm. know if he's going to be. Maybe he's the sixth man. I like Bones Island. Like I said, Bones I think I, they have a good top. They have a good top six or seven. They have mm -hmm. DeAndre Jordan as their backup center right now, unless Zeke Naji is. Uh, the backup center, then I think that that could be a real, like Jeff Green is getting up there in age. Uh, then they have a bunch of guys you don't know any anything about. Like, look at some of the names on their roster. We went over this on the Patreon episode. Like, like mm -hmm. I, I like Devon Reed, but like Vlad, Vladimir Kankar is the one guy. Uh, they have like f four or five guys. Like Christian Braun's a rookie. You never know what you're going to get. Peyton Watson, like Mm -hmm. I, I think that their depth is going to be lacking, but Jokic can make up for a lot of issues with depth because as he's proven, he'll play like 40 minutes in a game and it won't even. Well, and, and also just like, I mean, we're talking about like, who's, who's their, their starting team is it's what it's Jokic, KCP, Michael Porter, when healthy, Jamal Murray. Um, and then I don't know who would they start at power would, forward. Yet? Aaron Gordon. Aaron Gordon. Oh, obviously. Yeah. yeah. And, so then, so then you're talking about you know Bones Highland and Bruce Brown off the bench. That's seven. You two know, good, two good. Yeah, yeah, I said I like their top seven. Right. It's after that where I don't trust it at all. But then you have like you have Zeke Naji. I don't. I don't know. That it's it's just such a huge difference versus like last year when they were still a pretty passable team and yeah. they had like literally Bones Highland was their second best player. Sure, like yeah, no, so, no, it was very bad. I'm not, I'm not. I, yeah. I, I agree. That's why I took their over when we did the over unders. But right, right. So you know, but, I think, but like I think that I, let me, you said twenty eight and twenty seven and a half teams that he can uh, right. exact judge fairly. One of yeah. those teams, half of that team is whatever team Jokic is on, which is the Nuggets, right? Now. Yeah, the Nuggets, correct. Yes, that's the other team he's slightly in the bag for. Yeah. Can I make a prediction? Yes. Next year, someone's going to be front runner for MVP, whether it's Luca or Embiid or Tatum or whoever it is. Yeah. We'll be front runner for MVP, and Zach will get on the jump and be like, Is it just because he won two in a row already that we can't include? Nicole? Like, what does this guy have to do to win three MVPs in a row? Like, he might be the best player in the world right now and he's not even in the conversation we have burnout what's happening so if zach does that he is being an like an all-time hypocrite because that was the reason he didn't vote for Giannis yeah that year that Giannis was like Jokic's first title like yeah i think Giannis was better that season and i get everyone had voter fatigue and like zach's reasoning was like you're when you win three mvps in a row you're in historic rarefied air like you're LeBron, which, you're you're right. I don't think LeBron ever won three in a row. I think it's literally like Jordan, Kareem, and Magic and Bird or something. It's yeah, yeah. Like that. Yeah. yeah. So it like 
you didn't want to like put Giannis on the short list and then Giannis won the title like, fucking season. And, and, like, yeah, yeah. You know, that was his whole reasoning was like, this guy's never won a title. And then he immediately won a title. So <laughs> I, I feel like you can't, you know, you can't really do that. So that's definitely one. So can I make the Warriors case? Cause I think this is almost a lock as well. Um, yes. I, I'm interested to hear this one. I know Zach loves the Warriors, but the Warriors Zach, are the Warriors. Zach loves the Warriors, but to go back to the intrigue, like the palace intrigue thing, I think he's really going to be drawn to the idea of young guys popping and like what that looks like and kind of like the Moses Moody, Jonathan Kaminga, like Wiseman grafted on minutes, kind of what that Frankenstein's monster is going to look like now that you've like pulled out all your serviceable vets and you're just, you're taking the training wheels off the kids. Um, And, you know, he's going to say all the same usual, you know, warriors deep throating about the beautiful game and how they're, you know, lovely. They're so good. They're so fun to watch. Yeah. Whatever. Um, we, respect, we respect the ownership for paying the multi billion. Yeah, tax. They, they pay the tax. So yeah, well, whatever. Like, oh, they, other they, owners, they, just do it. Just do it. Which yeah. I agree with. Also, you should. <laughs> it's also like that place prints money. Like, I think they're still probably paying less money than like the Grizzlies fucking the Chase Center. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. a money making machine. We love to bring that up. Yeah. Um, but I, I think I think the Warriors are like more of a lock than like other teams people might think than like the Celtics because they're, you know, they're pretty straight up and down, you know, like, or, or the Bucks teams like that, that are like, there's not as much stuff people's like looking at. So I think the Warriors are also another like guaranteed lock just because of that, like added palace intrigue sort of element of the kids and the integration. I don't think Zach will include the Bucks and the Celtics because it's going to be a Bill Simmons. I get it thing. Right. Exactly. No, I agree. I get it. I get the, bu- the yeah, Bucks yeah, yeah. title. I get they have the best player in the world, yeah. maybe Giannis. The Celtics, they were fantastic. I expect them to be fantastic. Even with the Ime Adoka thing, I mm-hmm. think they're going to be great. I'm interested to see those teams in the playoffs. Yeah, exactly. Yep. That's going to be his whole thing on that. And I and I, I totally understand that. I don't have either of those teams. I mostly yeah. have teams. I, I have two kinds of teams in here. And it's I have a few that are similar to, to Zach's. Uh, one that I have that I is a lock for me for the for Zach is the Cavs because I think that the Cavs are because they got Donovan Mitchell because mm-hmm. he's gonna want to see he loves like Bobby Marks Dean Wade <laughs> I just need to see like he sounds like an accountant the accountant yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh god he's so proud of that one I it's love so it he's like Dean Wade like uh, Zach wants to know who's gonna be the fifth starter. He's in Shetty Osman, he's okay. Yeah, that, that's the other thing. He's, <laughs> he's okay. Shetty Osman at every chance. It's like, <laughs> Shetty Osman's okay. I don't know. Yeah, anyway. He's okay. He's okay. Can, can no, no the bench one, hold like, down the fort until Ricky Rubio gets back? But that's exactly yeah. what his thing yeah. is. So yeah. I think he'll have the Cavs on there due to the addition of that. I also think that he loves Evan Mobley. Evan mm-hmm. Mobley could be an all-time defender, and I need to see what he be, like becomes. Like everyone knows that the cat, like the Cavs swing piece right now. We might act like it's the fifth starter, but everyone knows, including Zach, including everyone who who covers the league, everyone knows the swing piece for them is Mobley. Because if Mobley yeah. is the guy, then they're a championship contender for the next five years. If he is very good, but not maybe even. Like, can he be Anthony Davis even? Like, that's that's the level of player that he would need to be for the Cavs to be championship right. contenders, in my opinion. If, if it were me and I were the one, because, you know, kind of going back to the Cade Scotty Barnes thing, if I were going to pick a young guy to make a leap this year, I, my money would be on it, Evan Mobley. Um, sure. Because I, I, he, I think he's the safe bet. Um, he also has think, the most room to grow on offense, I think. Right. I wonder... Uh, so I thought about the Cavs. I wonder if that's like that bench is a little too because it's it's definitely intriguing. You know what I'm saying? Um, I wonder if that bench aesthetic is like a little tough. Well, my thinking, my next team on the list, I think, is your Philadelphia 76ers. I have them on my list. I do. Yeah, I have them because he roped himself back in again. Right. And he does exactly. this every other year with the Sixers, where he's yeah. like, "I'm Tim Bontemps. I am." I am just so tired. I am so tired of covering this team and they they don't they have four bigs and then they have just Joel and Bede and then they have Ben Simmons never getting better and then Ben Simmons doesn't want to play and now he's like 
okay, James Harden, maybe a little bounce back. I just need him to be good. I just need him to be good. I don't need him to be amazing. I don't need him to be MVP. Tyrese Maxey breakout year plus the depth. I think that he's kind of back in on the Sixers. He's he's back in on the Sixers and also like he's he's ran the Sixers are gonna have a great offense too. Like, you know, like yeah. I, I think Bon Temps was right. I think he hit the nail on the head with this in that podcast where he was saying that like this is finally Joel Embiid gets to like just be Joel Embiid instead of being a fucking Sixers problem solver, you know. Like <laughs> yeah. and I and that's gonna be I think that is gonna be I, I think Embiid's really good. I you know, I you know think he's up Talk there with him. yeah. What? It's a controversial uh, opinion on this. Yeah, I say, well, well, I, I just mean like good. everyone's kind of well. I just mean like everyone's kind of like shitty to Embiid, and I, I, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think people appreciate how bad his situation has been for like six years now, <laughs> like or yeah. however long he's been in the league. Like, I mean, Bill and, did a whole podcast on it's the weirdest career situation he's ever seen, like a year, like less than a year ago. Yeah, so I think the Sixers are. I don't want to say locks, but I think they're like way up there in terms of like league pass rankings. So I think he'll and be you know he's going to have a goofy one, and I, that's the one I'm trying to figure out is what his goofy one is going to be. I have the goofy one. Okay, let's hear your what goofy is, one. I think his goofy one is going to be the Sacramento Kings, and that's I know what I was that, thinking in my head a little. Yeah, bit. you can hear him kind of talking himself into that. Yeah, it's like look, like you know, hey. They'll raise, they'll raise the banner for, as he keeps saying, they'll raise <laughs> yeah. the banner if they make the play in. The yep. Seattle Mariners just made the playoffs for the first time since 9 11 happened. Where are oh, you? My. Now you're, you have the longest streak, Sacramento Kings, and they've made every wrong decision. He's going to talk himself into it because he's going to want to see something good happen for the Kings and their fans. He knows how long they've suffered. He knows that this is the best Kings team probably in like a yeah. decade or uh, maybe over that. So I think that he's going to talk himself into them being like a top 10 team. So I have, I have them on here for sure. Yeah. I think that's a, um, I think that's a top one. I, I honestly, I think he's going to flirt with the Orlando magic. As a, I have as the a, Orlando magic on here as well. Yeah. Yes. And I think they're going to be one of my league pass teams. Cause I'm fascinated. Like I also have them as one of my league pass teams. Because I think, because here's the other thing about league pass teams is I feel like teams that are on national TV a lot is like almost cheating. Like to go back to talking about like the Bucks and the Celtics and stuff like that. Like even the Warriors, I don't think should really be able to qualify as like a league league pass team because they're always on fucking national TV. You can turn on ESPN yeah. or ABC every, you know. I think the Magic are a true historical league pass team in that nobody's going to be watching this shit. I think Paolo and Franz are going to be a lot of fucking fun. Um, they're going to have – I think they're going to be surprisingly spry. Jonathan Isaac, Herschel Walker 2.0, I think he's going to be out there ready to go. Um, like, I, I like really, they're going to be ready. So I, I, I like the Orlando Magic. I think everyone's – I think they're going to be sneaky fun. I think they're going to be more fun than the Knicks. Again, I want to reiterate, I do not think the Knicks are going to be very good. And I think they're going to be better than the Knicks right here. I said I heard it on this podcast. So uh, the only thing that scares me about the Magic, other than the fact that they're like, hey, they like to play meme players. Like they have, like, Bobo might be getting some minutes. Mo Bamba might be getting some real minutes. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. there's a reason why the Sheck West song is the most famous thing about Mo Bamba still. Like, yeah. He's like fine, but like Gary Harris got hurt, and they don't really with Marco Fultz out for the beginning of the season. We don't know when he's going to come back. In terms of watchability, I'm very excited to watch them. I think that they're going to be an awesome team. I'm very excited for the same reasons you are. But in terms of actually winning games, like Pelton said on this last episode of the Low Post, like the teams that always un that are always really bad are usually due to some, like, weird injury shit. And, like, they're going yeah. into the season with Isaac having not played basketball in, like, fucking five years. Uh, yeah. Fultz out again with another injury that seems kind of random. And then as uh, as Vagberg brought up, like, like they don't have a point guard. Like, that, like, like you have to hope that... Cole Paolo Anthony and Slander, and I won't stand for it. I won't stand for the Markel Fultz and Cole Anthony Slander, both at once. Well, Tragic. Fultz... Is they're like the opposite in terms of players. Like Fultz is like the guy that is like, 
kind of like, uh, you know, he can't shoot, obviously, but like he's good right. at a lot of point guard things. And then Cole's the opposite, where Cole's just like, I'm a bucket and a problem, but he doesn't want to do the facilitator yeah. duties. I, yes, I mean, I think I think that's true. So here's here's my counterpoint to that. I think you yeah. start, you know, you've got some guys who have a little creation chops. You've got Jalen Suggs on the team, you know, who, you know, we haven't even mentioned, you know, I think he's going to round into being a pretty okay player. I, I just hope guard so. He was top. terrible last year. <laughs> a lot of guards are, though. A lot of guards yeah. are. I, You know, like, I, 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 I think season two, a little bit better. Also, guards are, like, way more vulnerable to how bad their roster is. I think the roster getting better is going to help him a lot. And you've got Franz Wagner for creation. Like, That's I, the thing. Can Franz be the primary creator with with Paulo and some others assisting while Holtz comes back? But you know, it's not. They've got like other guys who are like interested. They got Chuma Okiki on that team. Like you know, like RJ Hampton. He's not Chuma, great. You're getting real draft psycho. No, RJ Hampton sucks, and I, Chuma Okiki oh, is like Chuma Okiki cannot shoot, which is just what do you he's do? Power with, forward. It's fine, yeah, but it's uh, I don't know. I love is winning Chuma, games. Chuma Mobamba front court. It's happening, and I'm excited for it. Let's go. <laughs> winning games. That's all I'm like. I like their talent a lot, and I think they're yeah. going to be a lot of fun. I don't see them winning more than like 28 to okay. 32 games. Okay. So maybe, but I also think the bottom of the East is going to be a lot of t- like that, that group, like the Bulls. The yeah. Bulls might be in the play in with like 37 wins. Like that yeah. might happen. Like, I, I just think, I think the top of the East is going to be really strong. I think that the bottom playing teams are going to be like mid thirties. Like I, I think that's going to be a, a difference. You know what I'm saying? And I, I just, I think the Magic and the Pistons can be in that mix. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Anyway. Okay, I understand that. I, it yeah. really just depends on how good the second year guys are. How good is Caden? How yeah. good is Franz? Because that is right. what is going to swing their fortunes for. Are we tanking for Wemby or are we going for the play in? And they'll know by around January whether they want to lean into that or not. I think Zach will have them on their list. Right now, of the teams that I've named that Zach has on their list, just to recap a little bit, we have the Sixers, the Nuggets. You had the Warriors on yours. I did not have the Warriors yeah. on mine. Yeah. I have the Cavs, the Kings, the Pelicans. And then I had the Raptors. Um, and then the other team, the, the 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 last two teams I have here for Zach, before I I list off some of mine, which I actually had the Cavs in common with him. I had the Magic in common with him, and then I had this team in common with him as well, mm-hmm. which is the Minnesota Timberwolves. Which I think yeah. that yeah, I want to so, see what yeah. how fucking weird this team is going to be because I think yeah. that's going to be Zach's pitch with. You got Carl Anthony Towns, got Rudy Gobert, and then obviously Anthony Edwards going into year three. We need to see, is he a superstar? They're they're like the most interesting freak show team besides the Nets. Like if the Nets didn't exist, everyone would be so excited about them. Like <laughs> yeah. and and that's like like they could be you could tell me they're a top four seed in the West, you could tell me they miss the playoffs, and I would believe either one of those things. Like straight up like it could be a disaster it could they could be incredible like they're they're fascinating to me i think that's a great call i think zach will definitely have them up there i'm very interested to see them uh, um and yeah i just the rudy gobert experience in, in in minnesota god damn it i really don't know what that's gonna look like um i hope it We're doesn't stunt Ant's yeah yeah i don't think it will i mean i think that ant is like He's just too much of a hooper to let anything get in his way. Yeah, like, that's he, a good point. Yeah. He's gonna he's no. gonna go out and get it. He's gonna get a bucket. But like, I I think that the 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 weird thing is gonna be figuring out D'Angelo Russell how he fits in all of this. Not that Rudy takes away a ton of offensive touches or anything, but he's a large right. part of of the offense running pick and roll. Obviously, I think I, I don't. Part of me could see them being like like Alex Spears from Saturday Slam and Jam who I've had on the podcast before thinks that they're going to be a top three seed. Like he's like in the regular season, I buy into this happening with Rudy Gobert being that like when he's on the court, you have a top five defense in the regular season. 
And then Anthony Edwards taking the next step. Carl Anthony Towns being the all-around offensive talent regular season-wise. And that's why I said on the over-unders podcast, I was like, oh, well, regular season-wise, even D'Angelo Russell's good during the regular season. Right. So so I could see them. It's I, I, Their depth is a little bit shaky. We'll, we'll, mm-hmm. we'll, we'll see. They're, as you said, freak show team. I actually do have the Nets on my list as well. I have yeah. the Nets mostly because... I, Zach won't have them because that's Zach, what I was say. Zach will not have them. But yes, that is the one team I can guarantee. It, it is like when he has to talk about the Nets, it is like you are breaking to him that a relative just passed away. He's yeah, like, yes. I, I can't fucking do He's calling the Voldemort on the podcast now. He's yeah, like, I, yeah. just, I, I can't, I can't. I can't talk about this team anymore. Like the on paper, the Dunder Mifflin Nets, as I believe yeah. you called them before, because they're just just good on paper, folks. Such a great joke, but it's so good. but I I I I think that I want I have two teams on my league pass rankings for a little bit different reasons, and mm-hmm. one is I want to see what like the Nets are always fun to watch because they don't play defense, right, <laughs> so yeah. like that that's fun. You never know what you're going to get with Kevin Durant. You never know what you're going to get with Kyrie Irving. You never know what you're going to get with Ben Simmons. So that team in itself is going to be a shit show. And then my honorable mention I had on here for that as well is the Lakers. Um, And I have the Lakers for very similar reasons, which is, yeah, they're going to be a disaster, I think. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. I So I put the Lakers and the Hornets in a different category because I think they're both going to be disasters and they're both going to be kind of a bummer. Like, yeah. I, I don't know if I really want to like, watch some of that so those ones are kind of and i, I kind of put the bulls in that too i think the bulls are also going to be a little bit of a disaster and i think that it's going to be tough to watch a lot of nights um yeah that's like that's that might be even more of a hopeless scenario than the hornets just because at least the hornets have lamel <laughs> like right exactly and and, and like, the hornets you know? tanking next year would be a good thing for the long term i think right because they'll exactly. get another guy in there and that they get at the top of the next draft with lamella whereas with these teams it's like the bulls don't even own their pick next year yeah i don't i think i just have like a shorter league pass list in general because i'm like looking at everybody and there's not really too many people i think the suns and the mavs have disaster potential like Christian Wood might like try to kill um, Jason Kidd on the court if he like tells him he's not starting. So like that that's fun. That's like a yeah. little a little zesty thing. A little wrinkle. Um, yeah, <laughs> a little treat. Um, yeah, no, I, I the Hawks. We kind of know what the, the Hawks are. I, I don't really think Zach will put them on the league pass rankings. I'm not like dying. I had to see him the Hawks. as their last team. I had him as the last team because he yeah. talked so highly about them on the most recent episode that I was like, yeah. I feel like he might have them on there. He, he does love Okongwu, and I kind of agree with him on this, that Okongwu is kind of like their X factor, but I don't, I'm not as high on him as he is. Like, like I just love Okongwu, and I was like, he's good, but like. Yeah, he's fine. But yeah, like, I, and the way he talks about him, you would think he's like Hakeem Olajuwon. I, I, th- I wouldn't put it past Zach, you know, with the Raptors and the Heat, he's such a stand for those teams. Those teams are just going to be so ugly. Like, both of those yeah. teams are going to have a lot of like sub-100 games. Like, um, like on both sides of the ball, um, and I just don't really have much an interest in watching that. No, I think, I think for me, like the league pass, it's a bummer about Chet being hurt because I would kind of want to put the Thunder on here, to be honest. Um, Mostly because you have a vendetta against uh, Sam Presti, and you want to see him suffer. Although he would be happy if they were losing, losing yeah. I, so I, I want Shea to win games. games. Yeah. <laughs> I just want Shea. I want Shea freed. I want. He is the lovely bones killer of NBA prospects. Like I mean, he can't keep getting away with it. <laughs> well, I mean, all you need is OG Ananobi, Gary Trent Jr., and two swaps, and you oh can god. get. Oh my god! Oh, for Raptors fans are gonna kill me, man. Like they're. <laughs> I can't. I for cannot. anyone that missed it, that was a proposed trade from a Raptors fan, and then OG yeah. o, uh, Twitter user oh, OG god. OG is Kawhi said that they could get uh a top 10 player with that package. So I, I looked this up and, and I know Vorp is not the be all end all, but just guess what OG Ananobi's Vorp was like in the league. Like what Vorp? ranked player he was in Vorp last year? Uh, 75th. He's 113th. <laughs> yeah. Well, because he doesn't play, didn't he miss a bunch of games? Isn't that Vorp is based oh, on? I guess Vorp does play. kind of aggregate a little, yeah. but yeah. like yeah. I think I looked at like BPM and like that was not much better. <laughs> So like, I mean, OG's OG. Look, Zach said it. He's making the. He's finally doing the. 
what leap is to be made? He's a very good role player. That's what he is. He's Herb Jones. He's older Herb Jones. Like, I'm sorry, like forward Herb Jones you instead of wing Herb Jones. Tall Patrick Beverly is what you Yeah, call tall him. Patrick Beverly. Like, I'm sorry. Like, that's uh, he's, a, he's a good player, but just like everyone has got to fucking chill out with the all star stuff. That's not <laughs> happening. I'm sorry. Yeah. Even with how bad like all star rings are. Like, I don't know. Yeah. I, I I don't think in this talented ass league that that uh, that OG and Anobi will be making all star teams. And I said this before last season, and I expected to get pushed back, and I didn't because it it's just the reality of the situation. He's a very good role player, very useful, good player that a lot of contenders could use. He would be fantastic for the Sixers. He would be fantastic on a lot of teams, but he's not a superstar. He's not an all star. Like it's just, that just is oh, what it is. Yeah, I, I think that there is. There are some teams that's like interesting moves. Like I wonder, like, like I wonder what happened to the Raptors if they like trade some of their depth for like Bradley Beal or something like that. Like, you know, if somebody makes a move like that to like change things around a little, like, you know, maybe some of this ends up different. But just going off of what I know, because there will be in season trades, you know, and some of this when Kevin Durant goes to the Memphis Grizzlies, you know, like, well, that'll change things obviously, but they were actually my last league pass team, by the way. And it isn't because of the reason you think the Grizzlies? They are my, they're my last league pass team because they have big body Roddy and they have Kenneth Lofton Jr. Great. I, mean, I don't I, know if you saw this, Kevin, but they, they had David Roddy out there and he, he looked like freaking Hakeem Olajuwon. I, I, Look, 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 I've talked to a lot of people around the team, and I mean a lot of people. I was talking with my son. He said, Dad, come in here and look at this guy, Roddy. And I said, yeah, that is David Roddy. And we went out that day. I got him a PlayStation 5, and I got him a David Roddy jersey. (laughs) KOC voice. That's awesome, man. (laughs) That's so cool. I'm excited. I'm excited for Vernon to like be losing his mind when they're an eight seed and they have to play the, the uh, I don't know, the Kings I, in the play in or I, something. I'll save my uh, predictions for where they're going to finish, but there has to be some teams that we're lower on and they feel like a natural regression candidate. And yeah. I, I just think that like, I, I, I want to see them because I really do believe that like if David Roddy and, and Kenneth Lofton Jr. Uh, become NBA players that, as Parm's theory will be tested here, uh, maybe Pat Riley will finally have to go into retirement for body shaming prospects for so many years, and we can we can move forward. Like I genuinely, every time I watch Ken- Kenneth Lofton Jr., I'm like, there's nothing that isn't an NBA player about this guy, except for the fact that like he might not be able to play defense, which is a very big part of it. I understand, right. but offensively, he fucking rocks, dude. Like. Yeah. Killed it in summer league. Killed it in the preseason, and I'm I I'm very very optimistic that one of those two guys is going to be an NBA player, and they're and it's going to rock. And I just need to see guys that look like like them that that succeed yeah. in the NBA. I always think that's fun. So. Those guys are great. Unfortunately, uh, JD Davis is better. So <laughs> JD Davison, baby. Yeah, I'm, no, I'm like. like- I, I'm being like five percent ironic. Like I'm very, I'm very excited about JD Davison and Sam yes. Hauser. Sam Sam loves to come on the podcast, and I do this too. By the way, I do it with all of our prospects, except for Jaden Springer, who apparently is the worst basketball player alive. Uh, he's not an NBA player at all. I was totally wrong on that. Absolutely missed. If he ever becomes an NBA player, it will be because. Some team that actually knows how to develop talent stole him and unlocked mm-hmm. whatever he sh- showed flashes of in college. Because holy shit, he cannot dribble a basketball. It's disgusting. He's, he's going to go to the Heat and get uh, hooked up 100%. to their Lolita Express machine down there that they used to <laughs> like get their get themselves uh, rocking with whatever whatever like premium blood transfusion <laughs> technology they have access to. Straight oh up vampire. My God. <laughs> yes i'm just saying i'm just saying the miami heat uh, jeffrey epstein could have lived anywhere and he lived in miami i just want to point that out i just want to point that out i'm not saying anything i'm not saying anything, anything about the miami heat franchise i'm not saying anything about pat riley i'm just saying jeffrey epstein lived in miami so that's just something to think about when you think about the miami heat okay so sorry go ahead Trump. i cut you off 
Amazing. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> we're not, we're deep enough into the podcast that we won't have to edit it out. It's cool. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so going back to, oh, what was I, what was I even talking about? I said, we're talking Parker. about David Roddy and body shaming, Kenny Lofton Jr. And yeah, well, and JD Davison and me being a oh, JD Davison, but yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. So I do this with our young guys all the time. Paul Reed, Tyrese Maxey, uh, mm-hmm. Isaiah Joe. I love to come on the podcast and be like, you can't be excited about your young players. Absolutely not. And this is why Paul Reed should have been the fifth pick in the 2020 NBA draft. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we're such hypocrites. Yeah. Well, I, I will say though, like there is, there is something uniquely good about like finding a guy at the end of the draft. Like when it's your team that does that, that shit hits so fucking good. Like the Tyrese it's, Maxey it's, stuff. Yeah. Like it's that, like morphine. It's like morphine. It, it is yeah. like morphine. The Rob yeah. Williams shit, like, oh my god, like, oh, yeah. that that feels Dude, so good. good for me. The Rob Williams shit, yeah. like, and I, yeah. I, I think I, you know, we want to talk about preseason reactions. I think JD Davidson is an NBA player. I'm, and I'm very excited about it. So, I, I'll we'll trust see. your judgment. I have, I, I, I know he had fans in mm-hmm. the draft process, but there are so many draft guys now that everyone has a fan somewhere. Yeah. So I, your- I can't really say, but. I looked at J.D. Davison after we drafted him, his statistical profile. Let me just say, I was not a fan of the statistical profile. He looked like one of the worst players in the country. But I got to say, on an NBA court, with our, like, third unit, pretty good. Pretty good. How old, how old is he? 20. He just turned 20. Yesterday. Oh, okay. Then you don't really yeah. have to care. Like, you don't have to care about the statistical output if a guy literally just turned 20. Like, the most guys that are 19 in college – suck yeah. and I then mean, it was really bad like really worse bad. than like, worse than peyton watson or patrick baldwin Jr. it was like it was like on the jalen brown level i don't know if you remember jalen brown's yeah. like college Fair advanced bad. stats were like historically bad like his, so i mean that's it he's jalen brown yeah that's that's where i'm going with this so. <laughs> he will be jalen brown 2.0 he somehow fell in the second round he will yes. make an all-star team be a key player on multiple maybe conference finals teams possibly final team so there we go that's the future for jd davison and, and you're an idiot if you think james wiseman is going to be any good in the nba yes exactly <laughs> correct correct we've got it all together baby the grizzlies are bad uh the Sam are bad. Went off. oh my god oh okay all right we're good yes so to summarize here to to, to wrap up yeah we'll, we'll hit on a, a, all our same points again but uh, to summarize, I have my lock for Zach as the New Orleans Pelicans. I have the Sacramento Kings, the Cleveland Cavaliers, the Detroit Pistons, the Timberwolves, the Nuggets, the Magic, the Sixers, the Raptors, and the Hawks. That's his top 10 list, I predict, for this year's league pass rankings. My league pass rankings were the Memphis Grizzlies, the Brooklyn Nets, the Minnesota Timberwolves, the Orlando Magic, and the Cavs with an honorable mention of the tire fire that will be the Los Angeles Lakers. Interesting. Um, I agree with most of that. I, I, you know, we just slandered Cade for maybe 10 minutes at the top of the podcast. God damn it. I didn't I, even want to do it, but I did it. I, I gotta say, I am I might be a Pistons sicko this year. I'm really interested in the Pistons. I really am excited to see. Jaden Ivey and Cade is fascinating to me. Like, and... They've got some big talent. They got some wing talent. I don't know. I'm 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 fascinated. I'm really excited to see them. So I, I might have to I might have to uh you know hide my identity online after my take about Kate at the top of this podcast. So uh I'm glad that there's at least one person that's high on the Pistons. I still think the Pistons and the Magic are a year away from being meaningful teams. But I like a lot of their young talent, and I'm excited to see how they look. And that's what the league league pass rankings are really about, to be honest. Yeah, I think I just don't. I think they're. I just think they're going to clear like the dregs, dregs. Like, and I think that they're both going to be in play in contention, like with the Knicks and like with the Bulls, who I think are going to take a huge step back. And I think that's going to be like that's going to be like the late bubble teams. And I think like the Wizards are and like teams like that are going to be like lower than. A lot of people realize, you know, Wizards, Hornets, yeah, yeah, exactly. The Wizards and Hornets are down there. Like everyone knows, the Pacers are going to be bad, but I think that's going to sneak up on people how bad the like Wizards and Hornets are going to be. So, but we'll see. I understand. Yeah, I got you. All right. Well, the the league is insanely deep this year. Uh, Go follow Sam. 
I've put his Twitter in the description. Thanks once again, Sam, for coming on. Always, always a great time when you come on. So I appreciate it, bud. Yeah. Oh, no. Thank you for having me. Um, and, you know, sorry about the outburst, but everyone uh, look into the connections between the Miami Heat and other people <laughs> who have run McMansions in the area. Just something to look into. Your Just, government name is literally listed right there. People can see it. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. I'm, I'm willing to tell the truth. I'll go down for this. If I'm found with a broken hyoid bone the next morning, just know Pat Riley did what he had to do. Hey, Thank you. Well, one last thing. Eric Spolstra also dated a team employee and married her. Just something else to think about. Okay. Okay. Okay, Brace Belden. All right. Thanks. All right. <laughs>